to Math 155. In this lecture video, let's take a look at how we can apply all these exponent rules together. All right, so what we got so far is a product rule, okay, where we add the exponents. Quotient rule is where we subtract the exponents. Negative exponent rule is where we got to flip it. And the power rule, where we multiply the exponent. So you may ask, which rule do I use first? Well, that really depends on the problem itself. Uh, most of the time, most of the time we will do the exponent rule first. Excuse me, we will use the power rule first when we see a parenthesis. Okay, that's most of the time that's what's going to happen. And you will begin to um, you'll begin to notice that as we go over some of these examples. Okay, so if you look at this very first one, the exponent 4 on the outside is sitting on top of the b to the negative third power. So my base is b to the negative 3. The 5 up front on the outside is still going to be just 5 times. So if I will multiply the exponent using my power rule, since I see the parentheses and exponent outside, my 5 is still 5 times b to the negative 12 power. All right. So since I have to write all the exponent as positive, the 5 is actually have a positive 1 power here. So that does not need to be flipped. The b will have to be flipped to the other side. So that will, give, that will leave me with 5 still on the top. b will come to the bottom, become b to the 12 power. So that will be my answer. Okay. Now, as you can, uh, when we talk about 0 for exponent, any, uh, this zero exponent is sitting on top of the 4xy to the third. So, all these guys, as a, together as one base, is to a zero power. So, they will become one. They will actually all become one to, because it's to the zero power. So, the only thing I have left with is simply negative two. All right, now this one is a very interesting problem because we don't see an exponent on the outside the parentheses. So when you don't see one, it's actually automatically assumed to be a one out there. Okay, why is that? Well, remember when we're talking about using one for exponent, okay, when you simply see an x, it means x to the first power. So when you don't see an exponent on if you don't see an exponent, it's automatically assumed to be 1 based on this particular rule. So my outer exponent 1 is now going to multiply all the exponents in the inside. So this, so inside the parentheses, I got two different factors, a and b. Each one has an exponent. A just, has, a just has an exponent 1. So my outer exponent 1 will multiply all the exponents in the inside. So then that should give me 3 on the outside, still going to be 3. All right, 1 times 1 is 1, so that's still going to be a to the first. 1 times negative 2 is still negative 2, so that will be b to the negative 2 power. So 3 is to the first power. a is also to the first power. The b has a negative exponent, so the b will flip it to the other side. So that b will come to the bottom, become b to the positive 2 power. That means the 3 and the A got to remain on the top. All right. Now, uh, maybe you might remember this. Before we do the product rule, I mentioned something about when you see a negative number in the parentheses raising to an even power, the answer will always be positive. Okay. Now, so for this particular problem, okay, this negative sign right here to an even power will actually give me a positive answer. So I'm not even worried about this negative sign anymore. So now I'm just now I'm just focusing on my five and the n, the two factors that's inside the parentheses. So five has an exponent one. So now my outer exponent two will multiply all the exponent in the inside. So what happened to my negative sign? I already took care of it once I saw negative number in the parentheses to an even power, I just know the answer will be positive. So this 2 is still 2 times. Um, 2 times 1 is 2, so that will be 5 to the second power. 2 times 3 is 6, that will be m to the sixth power. So now this part I can put in the calculator, which is 25 times 2, which will give me 50. All 
right? M to the six is still M to the six, so that will be the answer. Okay. So always watch out when you see a negative number inside the parentheses. Okay. All right, this example right here. So all right, let's see. My outer exponent is two, so everybody in here is my base. So I have different. I have three different factors. Okay. Very important that you see this two is a factor. Excuse me. This two is a factor. The a is another factor in the parentheses. B is another one. So if you look at this 2, this 2 actually have an exponent 1. So the outer exponent 2 will multiply all the exponents in the inside. So in a way, I'm, I'm kind of bring all my factors okay, to the outside the parentheses. So 1 times 2 is 2. So my base 2 is now to the second power. 2 times 2 is 4. That will be a to the 4. Negative 3 times 2 is now going to be b to the negative 6 once they come out. All right, so my base B has a negative exponent, so that got to be flipped to the other side of the fraction. So that means nobody's going to be in the bottom. Everybody's going to end up to be on top. So 2 squared means 4 times A to the 4. B will come to the top, become B to the positive 6. So that's my answer. All right. <clears throat> Let's try this one, okay? very careful now I got three different factors here three and a and the B so the outer exponent negative one will multiply the exponent on top of the three which is a one on top of the a which is one and the five so when everybody comes out it becomes three to the negative one a to the negative one over B to the negative five since all three factors has negative exponent, all three bases now has negative exponent, okay, so everybody got to flip, okay? So I'm looking at my exponent differently. Once they are outside the parentheses, okay, then I'm looking at the exponent on top of each base, all right? Originally, um, I was looking at this negative 1, as exponent, so that make everybody inside as one base. So once they're outside the parentheses, then now I'm actually having three bases because I got three exponents. Okay, that's just the way. Uh, that's the way um, I'm. I'm actually singing them. <clears throat> so everybody flip. So three will come to the bottom, become three to the first. A will come to the bottom, become a to the positive first power, and B will flip it to the top, become B to the positive fifth power. So that will be my answer. All right, now the next four problem is a little bit of strange, okay? Because what's going on here is all four of these examples here, the next four, they all can be simplified um, similarly. So, what's, so one thing they have all in common is you can actually simplify within the parentheses first before applying the power rule. So with this one here on the top left here, for example, I got 2m on top, I got 1m in the bottom. So that means when they cancel out, there should only be 1m left on the top. 3n on top, 1m in the bottom. Okay, when I subtract the exponent or when I cancel them out, I should have two extra n left on top. So these m and n are still in the parentheses raising to the second power on the outside. So now, m is to the first power. Let my outer exponent 2 multiply all the exponent in the inside to bring my m and n outside the parentheses. So that give me m squared times n to the 4. So that would be the answer right there. All right. Oh, again, negative number, right? Negative 6, negative number to an even power. Negative 2 is an even number. So my answer will come out to be positive. So I'm not even worried about that negative sign. All right. Now, before I multiply my exponents, okay, let's see. I can, I have one Y on top, three Y in the bottom. So when they cancel out, that should give me two Y left in the bottom because the bottom has one, two extra than the top. My 6 still up there, squared. My x still up there, squared. So what, what, again, what happened to the negative sign here again? 
are already took care of it by seeing negative in the parentheses, negative number in the parentheses to an even power. So now everybody is still to the negative two power. So let's multiply all the exponents, okay? So my six, my x, the y will all come outside to be to have a negative exponent, six to the negative four, x to the negative four, y to the negative four. So now everybody got to flip to the other side. So that will be y to the positive four over six to the fourth times x to the four. All right, so for the six to the four power, I can go ahead and put that in the calculator. So that will be y to the fourth over six to the four power. Let's see, six raised to the four power. That will give me 1296. So the y to the four over 1296 x to the fourth. Right now, this one here, interesting. Let me go back up. Sorry, this one here. I see a negative number in the parentheses, but this time it's raised to an i power. So that means my answer will come out to be negative. Okay. So again, I already take care of this sign already, so I'm not even worried about that. All right, this six is six to the first power. Um, ooh, I see I got x to the negative two on top, x to the positive one in the bottom. Okay, so here you can decide what you want to do. You can literally take the top exponent, subtract the bottom, or you can flip them. So I like to do the flipping. I'm going to flip this over here. All right, the y down here has a negative exponent, so that will go to the top. Okay, so I'm going to leave my negative sign on the outside, okay? So 6 is still on top. Now, this x to the first is still in the bottom. Okay, the y to the first stays on the top. All right, when the x to the negative 2 comes to the bottom, it becomes x to the positive 2. When this y to the negative 2 comes to the top, become y to the positive 2. All right, now I can actually go ahead and um, add my exponent. Let me move these guys up here a little bit. So what I have inside the parentheses now is 6y to the third over x to the third, whole thing to the third power. Okay, so now let's let's do our exponent rule. So my outer exponent three multiply all the exponent in the inside. So that will be what well, negative sign still up front, right? That'll be negative six to the third y to the nine over x to the nine. I don't have to do any flipping because I already did that. So six to the third power that should be two hundred sixteen. So my answer negative two sixteen y to the 9 over x to the 9 power. All right. So let's take a look at this one here. So this one, this is a positive 2. There's no negative number in the parentheses, so I'm not worried about my signs like, like I did with the previous two. So if you, if you can do this quick, by now a lot of students know this will come to the bottom, become y squared y squared with another y squared down there, we add the exponent, right? y squared times y squared, y to the fourth. All right, two still on top, x squared still on top. Everybody is to the third power. So let my exponent on the outside multiply all the exponent in the inside. Even the two, the two has an exponent one on the top. Just don't forget that's a common mistake right here. So that will be 2 to the 3rd, x to the 6th over y to the 12th. So there's nothing else to simplify because I already did so in, within the parentheses. So now I just got to type in 2 to the 3rd, which is 8, x to the 6th over y to the 12th. All right, let's take a look at these last two. These last two is slightly different than other ones because now they are, um, they, um, here I got extra okay i got a lot more than just one big parenthesis like my previous like the four we just did 
So because because I got multiple parentheses, that means I have multiple outer exponents. So for the one that you don't see an exponent, it's all gonna be one. All right. So let's bring everybody out. Let's bring everybody to the outside the parentheses. Let the outer exponent start multiplying. So that would be two to the first still, x to the third still. Outer exponent three times multiply its exponent on top of the six on top of the x. So that will give me six to the third x to the negative three power over. All right, this exponent one on the outside multiply the exponent inside doesn't change anything. That's still going to be sixteen, and y to the third coming out of the parentheses. So is the last one. If I multiply, that will be six to the first y to the negative one power. So now I can actually simplify this a little bit. Um, all my x's are on the top, so I'm not even going to try to flip them right now. I'm just going to go ahead and add them straight up. So x to the third plus x to the negative three. Three plus negative three will become zero. So when, when you have x to the zero power, um, it becomes one. Or some students see it as this flip to the bottom become x to the third power, which will cancel it out with the top x to the third, so that become one anyway. So the x will go away, become one. All right, the y, if you want to flip this y to negative one to the top and then <clears throat> subtract the exponent, you can. Or you can just simply say, well, take the exponent three plus a negative one, that will be positive two. But be very careful. <clears throat> if I take this 3 plus the negative 1, that give me y to the positive 2. But currently, this y to the positive 2 got to still remain in the bottom. Okay? Got to stay in the bottom. The law student accidentally put them on the top. All right? Be very careful. They were be they were being added while they were in the bottom. So that means the answer got to stay in the bottom. All right. Now I'll come to the interesting part. Um, I can put two times six to the third in the calculator divided by six times sixteen times six in the calculator, or I can simply just say, well, I got three six on top, one six in the bottom. When they cancel out, I should have six squared on the top, over, excuse me. And up front, I got 2 in the front over 16 in the front at the bottom. So when 2 and 16 reduce, that become 1 and 8. So that means I should have an 8 down here. So now this is 36 on the top over A in the bottom. So if I put it in the calculator or I reduce it by 4, okay, reduce the fraction by 4, that will be 9 over 2 along with my y squared down here okay now if you want to do it this way where you originally just say 2 times 6 to the third and see what that is and then divide it by 16 times 6 which is that 96 so 432 divided by 96 which is 4.5 compared to a fraction would be 9 over 2 Okay, that will give you the same thing. So again, I mentioned before, to convert to a fraction using a scientific calculator, you got to be looking for something called F to D or S to D. Now, a lot of times, if you, you know, since my answer, my decimal answer was 4.5, then the scientific calculator may go ahead and give me a mixed number, which is four and one half. So in order to convert four and one half to an improper fraction, then I will be looking for this symbol called A, B over C to D over C, something like that. It simply indicates convert from convert between mixed number and an improper fraction. So a lot of times scientific calculator calculator commands are color coded, so make sure you press the second button or the color button before you press a button um, that associated with this command. All right. So if you have trouble using your cal uh, scientific calculator, please just let me know. 
you can always uh, message me and tell me what kind of calculator you have, and I can look it up and uh, message you back on how to convert between fraction and decimals and mixed number and improper fraction. All right, let's do this very last one here. This last one, again, two different alter exponents, okay? So I cannot simply just say, okay, these X is going to cancel out. I actually cannot do that because they, they are trapped by a different alter exponent. So the only thing I can do initially is bring them all to the outside. So remember now, this 4 to the first, this 5 is to the first. So my outer exponent negative 3, multiply all the exponents that are in the inside for those factors. On top of those factors, so that would be 4 to the negative 3, x to the negative 6, y to the positive 3. Negative 2, multiply all the exponents that belong to the factor that's in the inside. So that would be y to the negative 5 to the negative 2, x to the positive 4, and y to the negative 2 power. So now I can simplify from here, okay? So it depends on what, what you prefer. Uh, I prefer flipping, okay? I know this 4 got to come to the bottom. This 5 got to go up top. This X got to come to the bottom. This Y got to go up top. Uh, I like to flip first. Sometimes I subtract right away, so it all depends. So if I just go ahead and flip them all, flip whoever I need to flip, who will be on top? Well, y to the third will remain on top. Uh, y to the negative two come to the top. Y to the negative two come to the come to the top become y to the positive two. Five to the negative two come to um, come to the top become five squared. All right. Four to the negative three power come to the bottom become four to the third. The bottom still got x to the four power. When the x to the negative 6 power flip to the bottom, become x to the positive 6. So now let's simplify this, okay? So 5 squared is 25. y squared times y to the third. Based on the same, we add the exponent. So that give me y to the fifth power over 4 to the third is 64, I believe. Just double check. All right, x to the fourth times x to the sixth power. Okay, add the exponents. That'll be x to the ten power. All right. So in this lecture video, we applied all the exponent rules. Okay, together um, that we mentioned in the in this integrated review. Okay, and to simplify all these expressions. All right. That will conclude this lecture video. Thank you for watching.